What is the biggest obstacle to buying or investing in real estate? That's a great question. Hi, I'm Paul Haley, Toronto realtor, resident, and investor. And by the end of this video, you will know what are the obstacles to buying and investing in real estate and where you stand on the biggest obstacle and how to start to overcome that obstacle. Sound good? Sounds great. There are five obstacles <laughs> to buying and investing in real estate. First one is fear of debt. I'll come back to that later. The second one is significant other, a person in your life um, that's going to affect your decision. The third is fear of the unknown. Uh, and the fourth, the more in terms of investing in real estate, and they are the debt wall and ability to manage the empire. So I'll talk about all five in other videos. Today I want to talk specifically about fear of debt because that's the biggest and that's what keeps most people from buying or investing in real estate. I want to make an important distinction between the fear of debt and the ability to manage debt. That's a very important distinction. So the first is you're actually just afraid of debt, but you're good at organizing yourself and your finances and you can do your monthly payments and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's fear of debt. If you actually can't manage debt, if you have an inability to manage debt, if that's the case and you don't have someone to help you manage the debt, real estate <laughs> investing might not be for you. Okay, I just want to make this important distinction. And I have a great example. I have a really good friend who, uh, who I was talking to this summer. He just actually paid off his mortgage, which a little bit goes against my personal philosophy. But he's the kind of person in his whole life, he just can't manage debt. He gets himself in trouble, maxes out credit cards. And he said, I paid off my mortgage and I was about to say, well, now you can leverage up and buy investment property. And I was like, yeah, actually that's good for you. <laughs> so fear of debt. <clears throat> There's a little test I like to give everybody. Now the test is important, but uh, it actually doesn't matter what your answer is. It's not a right or wrong situation. It's how you feel about the situation. Okay, so here's the test. I'm going to lend you as much money as you need to buy real estate. All you have to tell, and it's interest free, 0%. All you have to tell me is how much you're going to borrow and when are you going to pay it back? Interesting, right? So think about it for a sec. There's no right answer. And the answers range from, I don't want to borrow any money. That's very afraid of debt. To seasoned real estate investors will say, I will borrow <laughs> infinity, basically as much money as you're going to give me. And I'm never going to pay you back. Because I didn't say you had to pay me back. I just had said you had to tell me when you're going to pay me back. It's not a trick, it's a test to see internally how comfortable are you with debt. Now, most people are in the range of somewhere, they'll pick a specific amount, they'll pay it back over a period of time because that's where we're comfortable, okay? And that's okay. It's okay to be there. And the point of today, the point of this video is just to help you move up the scale a little bit. If you're gonna become a real estate investor, a real estate mogul, you're gonna have to get very, very, very comfortable with debt that's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. And now I want to help with that. So to help you think about that, the first question you need to ask yourself is what is money? That sounds like a crazy question. I know, right? What is money? So money is really, it's a medium of exchange. It's a unit of account uh, and it's a store of value. Okay. Has three primary functions in our economy. Now, historically money, is limited in supply. Uh, it takes resources to create uh, and it's widely seen to have value. Okay. Like think about gold, right? You have to mine gold. It's limited in supply. It's, uh, and everybody sort of thinks gold is super valuable. Okay. That's traditionally, that's what money is. But now in today's day, we need to shift our focus a little bit. So I would say there's a traditional perspective, which, you know, Cash is king. My dad used to say, money doesn't grow on trees. Cold, hard cash, right? Uh, money is wealth. Debt is bad, 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 right? That's kind of the traditional perspective. And it makes sense when you think about if money is limited in supply, 
uh, if it's expensive to extract and why they seem to have value. Now the modern perspective is currency is money without intrinsic value. So what do I mean by that? So Canadian currency money, you know, which we call it is actually unlimited in supply and it's free to create, right? So now it ruined, it ruins this concept of money. And now it's just this thing, these numbers that sit in bank accounts, ones and zeros and nines and right. These are, it's not a real thing anymore. That's kind of a modern perspective. And most of our money isn't even paper money, like paper, paper, you can't really eat it. It has no real intrinsic value other than, you know, it's widely seen to have value. And the important things are here is inflation is constantly eroding the value of money. So every year it's worth less and less, right? Uh, money is not wealth. It's money is the thing you use to buy wealth, right? Currency is the thing you use to buy houses, <laughs> cars, things you want. That's the actual wealth. Uh, and most importantly, when you're thinking about real estate, financial leverage creates wealth. So Robert Kiyosaki likes to say the rich people use other people's money, good debt for financial leverage. How have we traditionally been told to build wealth? We've been told to pay off debt and save, right? Now the problem with this, the, the traditional perspective is that as inflation erodes value of money every single day, every single year, then your savings loses value and real estate is actually moving in the other direction. So it becomes more and more unaffordable and it gets harder and harder to build wealth. I call this the vicious cycle of saving. So how do we build wealth in this economy? So basically as inflation is eroding value, now you're investing in real estate, the actual debt you hold on the real estate, contrary to what you might think is shrinking in value. Now every year, the real estate is going up and up and up, which allows you to borrow, to leverage more, and it becomes easier and easier to build wealth. I call this the virtuous cycle of real estate ownership. And it's how we build wealth in this economy where money is shrinking every year. So now you know where you stand in terms of fear of debt and how you might move forward and start to think about money differently, leverage differently, debt differently in order for you to build wealth. So if you found this helpful, please subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting videos every week on living for free, uh, replacing your income, learning to build wealth, real estate investing, all these things to help you move up the ladder, to move your thinking in terms of debt and investment. I'm going to post something every week to help you think about that. So please subscribe below. If you have any specific questions, please leave a comment below. Please send me an email. I'm happy to meet for coffee and talk about my favorite subject, real estate.